started studying culture, um, Catholic culture especially, the first book we read was the Aeneid, mm. which is, of course, not a Christian book. But to understand the world in, in which Christ, you know, Came into, into which Christ was born. Yeah. The Roman world, the pagan world, etc. And so to understand true Christian culture, the true idea of the West, quote unquote, it's really the coming together of the three transcendentals, which are represented by the three dominant cultures. You could say um, there's been a kind of annexing or rezoning so that Athens, Jerusalem, and Rome are now one giant municipality mm. called the West. So you have the true, which is Greek thought, you have the beautiful biblical faith, and you have the good, Roman law and the vision of life. So the biblical faith, of course, uh, the beautiful is the Judeo-Christian tradition. We see here what we talked about in the last podcast about the intersection of history with divine intervention. Yeah. But that, of course, is a total other talk in itself. But Greek thought, I think, is the one that's so interesting for us today. Um, the, the idea of Greek thought, of the Hellenistic worldview, Hel Hellenistic uh, just comes from the Greek word helos, which is the Greek word for Greek, <laughs> Greek word for Greece, I suppose. But here we don't see kind of this divine revelation. Rather, we see a more natural theology, a more natural philosophy, which is a consideration of God, religion, humanity, and kind of popular culture without the aid of revelation. Mm. What can we know about the universe, about God, uh, without revelation? Not, of course, that revelation is bad. Revelation informs all of this. But the whole point of of kind of the Greek school is that we can know this stuff through natural reason, mm. through natural theology. And natural theology is an essential part of the Judeo-Christian tradition yeah. as it's developed. The way of thinking has become an essential part of the tradition. So I suppose the Greek thought gives us four convictions. And I want to talk about the convictions because they help us to understand our relationship with God, our relationship with ourselves, and our relationship with creation. First of all, before we say anything, it's important to just remind everyone, I think we've talked about this before, the the kind of Greek conception of the human person, right? The word for human or man, mankind, is anthropos, mm -hmm. right? So the study of humanity, of civilization, is anthropology. And so anthropos in Greek is actually the word which means to look up or to gaze upward. Mm. But we use it to describe the human person for two reasons. One, the human person walks on two legs. We're called anthropods, right? But also because on a, on a more, I guess, spiritual level, on a more interior level, we are the first ones in the evolutionary process to have the faculty of reason, mm. rationality. Man, Aristotle said, is a rational animal. He's an animal, of course. He's got all of that. He's got the five senses. He's got the need to reproduce and to grow and to eat and to augment over time. He's got the need to um, go out and satisfy base material needs. You know, clearly... <laughs> Human persons have base needs, right? Food, shelter, water, relationships, etc. But the human person, and again, this is another talk, how did we get there? But um, uh, is a rational animal. Mm. That is to say, he no longer looks down at the world instinctually. Rather, he can gaze up and out of the world. And he can have the sense that his origin and his destiny are both in the heights Nice. And now it's the Christian belief, here you enter now that Christian tradition, the Judeo-Christian worldview, that the origin and, and destiny of the human person are not just up and above and outside of the human person, but the origin and the destiny are one and the same. Hmm.